let go of everything that's getting in the way of bringing your whole heart and soul and mind to this moment of worship, to this power of unfailing love and welcome who meets us right where we are, wherever we are. So let's gather around the light that guides our way. O living God, name unnamed, let my soul rise up to meet you. Let my soul soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. And whenever we light this candle, we proclaim, Christ is the light of the world and the center center of our our lives. lives. May God be with you. And also with you. God of the sunrise, thank you for the gift of this new day. Ground Ground me and and root me in your love. Open my heart to the beauty of your creation. Open my eyes to see the wonder of life. Open my heart to receive your grace. Let me worship you with all my heart and soul and mind and strength. Amen. Let's sing a hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill. God's steadfast love endures forever. Through our fear and doubt and struggle, God's love endures. Trusting in God's love 
loving embrace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the life of others, and the life of the world. Forgive us, O God. Move amongst us and give us life. Make our hearts clean within us and renew us through Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, sustain us and enable us to grow in love. Hear the good news. God's love is unconditional. God doesn't lose track of us or lead us astray or forget that we're walking the path of grace. When we get distracted, God waits for us. When we worry, God embraces us. God sees us, hears us, welcomes us, makes room for us because God's love is unconditional, and it never, ever fails. Thanks be to God. Let's sing a song of praise. God welcomes us, let's welcome each other and greet one another with a sign of peace.
seat, everybody. Well, good morning. Welcome everybody to summer worship. Welcome to everybody who's here in the sanctuary. Really great to see you this morning. And welcome to everybody who's worshiping with us online. We're really glad that you found this live stream and came in to worship with us. So welcome and good morning. And if this is your first or second time in worship, either here in the sanctuary or online, we're really glad that you're here as well. Thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Um, a special shout out this morning to everyone who is joining us in worship from Riderwood. We're really glad that you gather with us week by week by week. We're really, really glad that you're here today. And everybody in the sanctuary, if you'd like, you can turn around and wave at the people who are worshiping from Riderwood this morning. Good morning. And we're celebrating a baptism this morning, so we're very exciting. So welcome everybody who is a member of Evelyn Jones' family. We're really glad that you're here today to celebrate this baptism. And thanks to all the people who are making worship work this week. Our song leaders are Melissa and Sarah. Thank you very much. Um, our liturgist is Carolyn. Thank you. Our ushers are Nancy and Emma. And in the tech booth, we've got Matt, Debbie, Barry, and Jonathan. So thank you for your ministry this morning. The COVID-19 transmission level for Howard County remains high, which means that we're asking you to please wear a mask when you're here in the building today. And we're encouraging you to wear a mask whenever you are indoors, in the public, in the coming week. And as we continue to worship together this morning, just a reminder about why we've all gathered here. Because we're a community of people who try to live every day trusting that in the spirit of Jesus Christ, the world can be repaired and set free. And we who believe in freedom shall not rest until it comes. With joy, we share this vibrant, diverse life together, loving one another and loving God's world with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We invite everybody to come and share in this life of grace along with us because everybody is welcome here. Everybody. So we are celebrating a baptism today, so let's come to the, let's come to the font. Brett, do you need this? Perfect. So you guys can stand up a little closer to the baptismal font, and Jane and John can stand behind them, and we're up here with Brett and Janet as well, and Sue is coming. coming along. <laughs> oh, this isn't what I need. This is what I need. I'm okay, sorry. good. I'm getting so, organized. So. Well, this is a happy day. Um, Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I've commanded and remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. This sacrament, the sacrament of baptism, assures us that Christ is with us, that sin is washed away, that we've started a new life in Christ, and that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, God proclaims God's love for us, and we, the church, receive the reality of God's grace as we publicly demonstrate our faith and our trust in God. Baptism is a lifelong journey, but Jesus himself was baptized in the River Jordan. The Spirit came upon him there, and that anticipated his entire life of obedience. Like that, the meaning of any one person's baptism is just a beginning. The uh, can only the full meaning can only be seen throughout the course of, of their life as we practice what it means to belong to the Lord. And that is why, obeying Jesus' words and confident of God's promises, we baptize those whom God has called. So let's remember here this morning with joy our own baptisms as we joyfully celebrate this sacrament today. Brett. On behalf of the session, I present to receive the sacrament of baptism, Evelyn Joan Sivo, the daughter of Savannah Sivo and Zachary Sivo. So, Savannah and Zachary, do you desire for Evelyn to be baptized? I want to ask you these questions in her regard. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you renounce evil and affirm your reliance upon God's grace, do you? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you claim God's covenant promises on Evelyn's behalf? And do you look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for her salvation as you do for your own? 
relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith in your own lives to teach that faith to, faith to Evelyn, your child, with all the means God may give you? Then Brett has another question for the congregation. Do you, in the name and on behalf of the Church of Christ, undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of this child so that in due time she may confess faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please say, we do. Yes. We do. Will you endeavor by your prayers and by your example and companionship here in this church to strengthen the church around the world and so to benefit Evelyn and her family wherever God may lead them. If so, please say, we will. We will. We will. So let us pray. Here is the water. Dear Lord, pour your spirit over us and upon this water so that this font may be your womb of new birth. May all who now pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bring them to the household of faith, guard them from all evil, strengthen them to serve you with joy until the day that you make all things new. And to you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. What is the name of your child? Okay. Evelyn. Evelyn Jones Sebo, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Defend, O Lord, your child Evelyn from this day forward forever and more. Uh, always surrounding her with your grace and presence so that she may daily increase in spirit and favor and may the day soon come when she will stand with us and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Kathy. Kathy has a presentation from the, the, oh, the, the, cool, the knitters for you. Let me stand aside a bit. On behalf of the stitching ministry of the church, we'd like to present Evelyn Joan a blanket in celebration of her baptism. Please let her wrap in it and play with it so that she's reminded that she's loved by God and this congregation. Thank you so much, Kathy. This is a happy day. Uh, these parents have made promises before you and before God, and you have made promises to them. And we together will work to and pray and play and just spend time with Evelyn so that she can grow and always be aware that she is loved. And this is a place where she is loved, and these are arms that love her. So thank you very much. You're happy to uh, be here and have this chance to celebrate with you and make this commitment to her. Thank you. So I think the congregation sing a baptismal hymn, so let's stand and sing Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. Okay.
O Spirit of God, as the scripture lesson is read, and as we think about it, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to understand your word to us. And help us to follow Jesus every day of our lives. Amen. Today we're reading the first lesson from 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 38 to 41. In the midst of a famine, when food is scarce, the prophet Elijah purifies a pot of stew that has been fouled. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. As the company of prophets was sitting before him, he said to his servant, Put the large pot on. Make some stew for the company of prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs. He found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds. And he came and cut them up into the pot of stew, not knowing what they were. They served some for the men to eat. But while they were eating the stew, they cried out, Oh, man of God, there is death in the pot. They could not eat it. And he said, Then bring some flour. He threw it into the pot and said, Serve the people and let them eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Well, it's time to light our children's friendship candle. So all the children at home, it's time to pull up close. We light this candle as we've been doing every week to remember that we're praying for each other, we care for each other, we love one another. And all the grown-ups in the congregation, this is your cue to remember, pray for the children of this congregation this week. I'm gonna put this right here at our special place. And I'm gonna ask children in the congregation if you want, there's a few here, if you'd like to come and join me for prayer, come put your mask on tight and come right here. We're gonna stand by the baptismal font today. Hi. Come on, come and stand right up here with me. Yeah, it's good to see you. Hi. Good morning. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. How are you all? Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, we just had a baptism, and you can put your hands in the water and see the water and maybe put it on your head, put it on your face. You can put a little on to remember the water means God loves us. And every morning we can remember when we wash our faces, we can remember that God loves us. Just like at baptism where everybody promised that little Evelyn would grow up and know all the stories about Jesus because Jesus loves her. Jesus loves all of you too. All of us who have been baptized, we can claim that. And even if you can't remember your baptism, because Evelyn probably won't remember this day when she grows up, even if you can't remember it, everybody else, rem- other people remember it. Your parents remember it. Your, your sisters and brothers and siblings remember it. Your um, people in this church, if you were baptized here, remember it. And you can remember it when you take a shower and the water's falling on you, when you're washing your face, when it's raining and you get wet. Yesterday I was sitting outside at night and we had a little tiny bit of rain and it was just falling on everybody and I was thinking, oh, God loves us. That's the water, it's a sign that God loves us every day. So we're gonna thank God for the sign of water, for baptism, for our baptism. We're gonna ask the grown-ups to help us out and then we'll all pray the Lord's Prayer together. So let's get ready to pray. Dear God, We know you love us. Thank you for reminding us in water. Help us to remember how much you love us. That you love us all the time, every place, everywhere, in all that we do. You are with us, loving us. Thank you. And now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up and sharing in the baptism. Miss Kathy is right here, and she's going to meet you if you're going to Godly Play. You can meet her and go with her now. And uh, everybody have a wonderful morning in worship. Miss Kathy, Z, are you going with Miss Kathy? Well, our gospel text today is from the Gospel of Luke, and it is a um, sandwich story. It's a story sandwiched in between two halves of another story. So listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church, and may our ears be open. Now, when Jesus returned, he'd been on the other side of the lake and he came back. When Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed them, welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, do not fear, only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, James, and John, and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her. But he said, do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Well, we're in the middle of the third year of the pandemic. As much as we all want to declare that the pandemic is over, we know in our hearts that it is not. Transmission rates, instead of declining the way we anticipated just a couple of months ago, are increasing dramatically. COVID is going to be a longer haul than the long haul we came to imagine. And it's impacted not only our lifestyle and our household economies, but also our attitudes and principles and beliefs, our ideas about God and what it means to be human and what it means to be church. So Morton and I are taking the month of July to explore some of the ways that we think COVID is reshaping our understanding of God's claim on us. So, so far we've talked about trust, our trust in each other, and God's trust in us not to mess up Jesus' mission irreparably. And last week, Morton talked about mystery, 
that beyond our knowing, there is more to the universe than we can see. This week, we're thinking together about health. In the past two and a half years, we have all paid more attention to our health and the health of our parents and our children and our friends. We've worn masks, we've tested, we've been sick, we've isolated for five days, and we know how to read about transmission rates now. And when we become eligible, we've been vaccinated and boosted. And just a note here, since our county is a county of high transmission, the CDC reminds you to stay up to date on your vaccinations and boosters and to wear a mask indoors in public settings. Just a little commercial. You know, I think COVID has encouraged us to become more informed about health. And beyond our personal health and the health of our families, COVID has awakened in all of us a broader concern for public health the health of our community, and beyond that, the health of the whole world. We have a deeper concern for health care equity, quality, and accessibility. COVID is putting the issues of health disparities front and center, that there are what the CDC calls preventable differences in the burden of disease, injury, violence, or in opportunities to achieve optimal health, experienced by socially disadvantaged racial, ethnic, and other population groups and communities. We know that's true. A little girl is dying, and her father, a community leader whose name is Jairus, comes to Jesus to ask if he will come with him to her bedside and touch her and heal her. He is a powerful man who does not have enough power to heal his daughter. But he has faith that Jesus has the power that can heal her. Along the way, Jesus gets interrupted before they can get to her. News comes that Jairus' daughter has died and everybody is grief-stricken. Faith does not preclude grief when we experience a terrible loss. Even a deep and abiding faith in resurrection does not avert pain and heartbreak that we feel at the death of a loved one. What interrupted Jesus and Jairus is a woman with a desperate medical condition. She has been sick for as long as the girl has been alive. She has spent everything she has. She has exhausted her savings on medical care. There are no treatment options left to try. There seems to be no cure. She is now indigent, and she seems to be alone. There's no one who comes to Jesus for her. She has no advocate and no caregivers. What she does have is faith, the same faith that Jairus has, faith that Jesus can heal her. So she gets out of bed and struggles through the crowd to get close to Jesus. She's probably crawling on the ground, because she reaches out from behind and touches the hem of Jesus' coat, the fringe of his prayer shawl. Daniel Cariola, a Chilean artist, has painted a mural depicting this moment. It's in a small chapel in a church in Magdala, Israel. And Debbie's going to put it up on the wall for us now. Amid the dusty feet of a stranger, of strangers, a woman reaches out with hands of faith to touch the presence of Christ, and she's cured. Jesus notices. Someone has reached out, reached through to touch him. Someone whose faith has made them well. She has touched the realm of God, and she has become part of it, part of the new community of hope. Daughter, Jesus says, go in peace. A child is given a full, happy, healthy life. A disregarded, impoverished woman is given health and strength and peace. There's a lot going on in this text. It's a story about women and girls. They are the subjects of Jesus' ministry as well as the objects of Jesus' healing. Their lives matter so much to the realm of God that Jesus doesn't let anything get in the way of their inclusion. 
The realm of God cannot become real without them. And it's a story about the value of women's lives. Saving the life of a woman who has a woman's illness is critical for Jesus' mission. Let me say that in another way. Reproductive health is a priority for Jesus' ministry. And access to reproductive health care must be an essential component of the ministry of Jesus' friends. And the lives of both the child and the adult are equally important and receive equal shares of Jesus' healing touch. A good birth is as important as a good death. Thanks, Debbie, for showing us that picture. So healing, it seems, is a primary way the realm of God is proclaimed and received. Healing is how people know that the realm of God has come near. So human health is a primary concern for Jesus, which means that health care for all people and all communities needs to be a primary concern for Jesus' church. When we hear the story of Jairus' daughter and the hemorrhaging woman, we actually might be bold enough to say human health is the principal mission of the church. Spiritual health, yes, but maybe, and maybe more important, mental health and physical health. Because immediately after Jairus' daughter and the hemorrhaging woman are healed, Jesus calls the 12 disciples together and he sends them out to do ministry on their own. And he tells them, to proclaim the realm of God and heal people. Heal the world. Start with humans. So we, the company of Jesus' friends, we are to be a visible force to protect and improve the health of all people and entire communities and to prevent problems from recurring. The church joins the medical community to look for ways to improve the mental and physical health of entire populations. For example, by identifying ways to curb bullying in schools. By working to identify the causes of gun violence and developing interventions to prevent it. By delivering healthy babies in the developing nations and also in communities of color in the United States. And by understanding COVID and malaria and tuberculosis and working to control their spread. The church cares deeply, openly, steadfastly, faithfully. The church cares about who has access to the fringe of Jesus' garment. The church looks for the ones who are struggling in the crowd, trying to reach the source of healing, but getting trampled underfoot. So health care, equity, quality, and accessibility is not about politics. It's gospel work. We who follow Jesus join the disciples in being healers in proclaiming that the realm of God has come and that we have touched that reign and have become part of it and that we know where it hurts and we also know how to find relief. In the touch of Christ, our healer, we must clear the way. Let us pray. So God, grant us wisdom and courage for the living of these days. Amen. Our affirmation of faith this morning comes to us from the Wild Goose Resource Group um, the, of the Iona community. I invite you to stand, if you will, and you're able, and let's say together who we are and what we believe. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. Jesus came in the body to give worth to every human life. He touched the untouchable, loved the unlovable, forgave the unforgivable, and endured slander, persecution, and death in order that through suffering love, God's kingdom might come on earth. Christ rose from the grave as living proof that what is laid down in faith will be raised in glory. Christ ascended to heaven to be present at all times to all people. Thanks be to God. Please have a seat. We are grateful and thankful people and we strive to live grateful and thankful lives. Those of you who've brought an offering today, the offering basket is near the sanctuary door as you leave the, the sanctuary after worship. Please place your offering in that basket after the service and the ushers will take care of the basket afterward. We give God praise for the world that we live in. We commit our lives to answer God's call each and every day. Let's listen to this anthem.
We pray each week for the people and for the circumstances that are listed in the first day guide to prayer. Also, they're included in the worship materials that you can find online. New in the list this week, we pray for Bob, for Dan, for Mansa. The red rose on the communion table today celebrates the birth of Samuel Lawrence, born to Tom and Kristen, July 13th, the grandson of Larry and Nancy. We pray for the peace of Christ, which passes understanding to be with Anne, with Beth, and with Tom Foltz following the death of their grandson, their nephew, their son, Jim Foltz, on July the 7th. We continue lighting a candle each week to remember all of the people who've died from the effects of COVID-19 during these years of the pandemic. In life and death, we belong to God. We pray also for the prayer requests that you've written down on this little book that's at the door to the sanctuary each week. Uh, Prayers for Sunday, July 17th. We ask prayers for my grandmother who is having surgery tomorrow. We ask prayers for Lois whose cancer has returned. We ask prayers for all who are traveling. We ask prayers for Shaban, who has stage four cancer. We ask prayers of thanksgiving for safe travel, continued prayers of safe travel this week for my brother Paul. We ask prayers for Priscilla and Joe navigating their health. We ask prayers for my uncle Harry McCormick, who has lung cancer that has spread to his brain. We ask prayers for James Collins in the hospital. We ask prayers for Lydia, her parents, and doctors at Texas Children's Hospital. Let us pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the universe, wondrous and fair, We give you thanks for the amazing beauty of the cosmos, the stars, the galaxies, the nebula, the light, for the wondrous sense of the passage of time on astronomical scale, for the ability to see it, for creative minds and for the will and wisdom to see that creativity through to greater understanding. We thank you, God, for all of those whose work on the great missions of exploration now underway, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, are helping us to learn more about the world we live in and give us, we pray, greater wisdom about our responsibility, about our place in the natural order. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we gaze at the stars and planets and consider We continue to pray for people of the earth, for all places of struggle, violence, and war, for the war in Ukraine, for the people who have lost land and homes and families and lives. We pray for people everywhere affected by economic hardship, by famine, by illness, by social disorder. We pray for wisdom, courage, and vision for leaders everywhere. Let good sense prevail. Let hearts of hope and love for justice determine our path. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nation and for our community. We pray for our homes and our families. We pray for patience, resolute faithfulness, and strong support. Give us light and direction for our journey. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this church and for all churches. Help us to hear your voice faithfully, O God. Help us to touch your Holy Spirit. Help us to be of one mind with Christ and to walk in step with Christ. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us as we pray together. As you cause the sun to rise, O God, bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel the shadows of hatred and fear. Give us grace to reflect Christ's glory. Let Christ's love show in our deeds. 
Christ's peace shine in our words, Christ's healing flow in our touch, that all may praise you now and forever. Amen. O God, we lift these prayers and concerns to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just a couple of quick announcements um, for this week of our life together here in the church, and not really that much to say, and most all of it's printed in the bulletin, but I want to remind you especially that this week is the week for Vacation Bible School, so we invite your prayers and your encouragement and your support for all of the children and for all of the teachers and staff who are going to be leading Vacation Bible School. Starts tomorrow morning, you may see evidence around uh, the church building as you walk around, and we hope that everyone has a wonderful, wonderful time, and we do give thanks to all of the people who are helping to make it happen. Lemonade on the Lawn is today after worship. We invite everyone to stay, linger for that, come right out to the front and enjoy one another's company and, and conversation as we enjoy the lemonade on this summer day. And that's really all I'm going to say for today for announcements. You can read the rest, but we hope you have a wonderful week and in everything you do, may God be at work in you. This is the good news. Christ, Christ has is risen, risen and, and the Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. This is our story. In, in life and in death, we, we belong to God. God. This is our new commandment, to love, love one another as Christ, Christ loves us. us. And this is our calling, to, to pray, pray and work for the justice and joy of God's God. realm. So go out into the world in peace. Proclaim the good news that God is with us and heal the world. May the blessing of God be yours. May the blessing of Christ be yours. May the blessing of the Spirit be yours, pouring upon you this day and every day, gently and generously, gently and generously.
Amen. Amen. Amen.